Coming up in sports, the Gators softball team faced off against the Oklahoma State Cowgirls last night. See how Florida fared in the showdown between the two top 20 squads and more after the break. You're watching WUFT-TV News. I'm Jack Meyer here with your sports roundup for this fine Tuesday afternoon. Starting off on the diamond, the Florida Gators baseball team is on the road tonight as they prepare for a home and home series with the North Florida Ospreys. Florida's opening weekend was full of unexpected and rather unwelcome surprises. The Gators came up short in a 9-5 loss to the St. John's Red Storm on Friday night, marking the first time UF had lost their season opener in 11 years. The final two games of the series were subsequently canceled due to inclement weather. Despite all of this, Florida is still ranked number four in the country in the latest D1 baseball rankings. The Gators will match up against the Ospreys in Jacksonville tonight at 6 p.m. before the two squads meet again in Gainesville tomorrow evening. Making a U-turn back into Gainesville, the Gators softball team came up short in a pitcher's duel with the Oklahoma State Cowgirls last night. The Gators got off to a strong start defensively, tossing a pair of hitless innings to keep the Cowgirls at bay. But in the third inning, Oklahoma State infielder Carly Godwin blasted a 3-1 homer over the left field wall to take the lead. Florida could not muster up a response offensively. Right fielder Katie Kistler hit a pair of singles to give the Gators some hope, but the team could not capitalize on either knock. Up next for Gators softball is a road matchup with the North Florida Ospreys tomorrow evening. First pitch is set for 6 p.m. Going from the diamond to the hardwood, the Florida Gators men's basketball team has hit their stride at just the right time. After winning seven of their last eight games, the Gators cracked the top 25 in the latest AP poll, coming in at number 24 in the country. Florida has taken care of business against some of the toughest teams in the SEC over the last three weeks, including the Auburn Tigers and Kentucky Wildcats. But tomorrow evening, the Gators will face one of their toughest tests yet, as they prepare to play host to the current top dog of the conference, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Florida head coach Todd Golden acknowledged Alabama's high-powered offense as a potential challenge his squad will have to face. Alabama's you know, probably not the team you want to see if you're really trying to get better defensively the next week, but uh, it'll definitely give us an opportunity to go out there and, and try a few different new things uh, and, and just really take on that challenge of seeing, you know, if we can disrupt them on their home floor, which is going to be a challenge to do. Tip off for tomorrow's matchup between the Gators and Crimson Tide is set for 7 p.m. Flipping over to high school basketball, last night was jam packed with girls' postseason action. The Hawthorne Hornets took home a 55-42 victory over the Madison County Cowboys to advance to the Class 1A state semifinals. Meanwhile, the Oak Hall Eagles and PK Young Blue Wave hit the road for their regional semifinals matchups, but neither squad found much luck. Oak Hall was throttled in a 64-17 loss to the North Florida Educational Institute Fighting Eagles, while PK Young could not hang on in a 77-62 loss to the Providence School Stallions. Tonight, it's the boys' turn to take the center stage. In the Class 6A Regional Semifinals, the Buholz Bobcats will take on the top-seeded Wiregrass Ranch Bulls, while the Gainesville Hurricanes are up against the Ponte Vedra Sharks. On the other side of town, the Trenton Tigers and Williston Red Devils will face off in the Class 1A Regional Finals. All three games will tip off at 7 p.m. In the world of college football, next year's playoff picture is set to look a little different than before. This morning, the College Football Playoff Board announced they had approved a new 12-team postseason format that will be implemented moving forward. Under the new format, the five highest ranked conference champions will earn the first five playoff berths, while the remaining seven spots will go to the top remaining teams in the rankings. This marks the first change of format in the college football playoff since the original four-team system came into effect in 2014. And finally, NASCAR fans are still reeling from a chaotic finish at this year's Daytona 500. After escaping from a 22 car crash with just nine laps remaining, William Byron of Hendrick Motorsports came away with the win in this year's Great American Race. I had not seen a crash that chaotic since I watched Talladega Nights. Well, hey, as Ricky Bobby says, if you're not first, you're last. Yeah, a 22 car pile up without the bad weather that is. That's, <laughs> that's got to be crazy. Julia, what do we have to look forward to? Today? Well, luckily, no more rain like we saw with the Daytona 500. We are warming, though, into the 70s by the end of the week. Thanks for the check on the weather, Julia. BBC World News is next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. Bunch of Florida News is always on at WFT.org. Have a great night.